Because if I were my, I'd be really scared right now. Because if a literal bullet to the eye wasn't enough to take this man out, you probably need an Avenger. Hey guys, it's your girl Laisha, K Geek X Sex Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Marvel Studios Echo. We're now on to episode four, which is called Taloa, I believe. Again, I feel like the accenting is probably wrong. Please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing. So in the last episode, we had another flashback to one of my ancestors of the same name of the episode, and we see that that person also got the power that seems to be handed down through the ancestors when she needed it most to protect her family. And then we flash back into today's time and we see that the person who worked for her uncle, Maya's uncle, I think his name was Vicky. He went and sold Maya out, hoping to get a payout, not realizing that people like this don't pay for anything if they don't have to. But he discovered that too late and unfortunately grabbed Maya, grabbed her uncle and had them sitting ducks for uh, Fisk's men. It ended up being like a knockdown, drawn out b battle that took out the majority of the roller rink. Maya almost had the upper hand, but unfortunately because Bonnie also showed up and ended up getting taken and her uncle were both there and they were collateral damage she wasn't willing to take. They ended up getting the upper hand on her. But at the last minute, we see that the hit was called off and it was called off by none other than Mr. Fisk, AKA the Kingpin. He lives, he's walking, he's missing an eye, but he's up and around and he wanted to come and see Maya personally. And that's literally where we ended the episode with him facing off with Maya at their old home. So yeah, I'm really interested to see what we're going to talk about in this episode. If Fisk, in fact, is going to try to talk to her, bring her back into the fold or try to, or if he's just going to want to take his revenge personally, because we do know that he's got a heck of a temper and he holds long grudges. So I'm ready to jump into the episode, but just before I do, a reminder that I do a lot of different reactions here on the channel, all kinds of good stuff. And if you'd like to support me on my journey or just be updated when I do more uploads, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And please show some love to this video with some likes and some comments below if you're feeling it. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right about now. See if we do another flashback to Maya's ancestors, maybe by the name of Taloa, because Lord knows she's gonna need the power of Grayskull to fight Fisk, 2008. Ooh, private school, fancy. Yeah, that was rude, but I also understand that a lot of people don't necessarily know that people are deaf, but a little bit of patience goes a long way. Oh, looks like Fisk is about to make sure this man never sells what dogs again, or ice cream. Oh God. See, this is how Fisk typically handles things that upset him. So I'm a little worried for Maya. Not in the white suit. You're never getting bloodstains out of that. I don't think that's about Maya anymore, dude. That was way too much. Especially considering the fact that you could probably buy an entire ice cream factory for her. Yeah, she's outside the car. Or daddy told her to look. Watch. Dang. Well, she got that gangster in her. But, you know, maybe we shouldn't be teaching her to solve all of her problems with violence. That might be why she's like this today. You and I. We are the only ones we can trust. Oh, I can do you and I in sign language. You're dismissed. Oh, I hope she's okay. Don't, don't, don't dismiss her forever now. She was just a signer. Although she might know too much. Oh, I don't like that that hallway is plastic. No. Yep, never walk into a hallway full of plastic. Damn. I mean, I kind of get it, right? Like she knows too much. She would have heard all kinds of things, but dang. All that just because you're trying to help somebody with a different ability? That's... Wow. I mean, on the upside, Maya, you could probably outrun him. Now that your leg's fixed. Of course, but of course he didn't come alone because Fisk is a little bitch. Why did you keep your eye open? I would have completely... Can we please talk? 
Oh, if that actually exists, that's amazing. I commissioned a few accessories. Not gonna lie, it actually, if that exists, that would be amazing. If not, someone needs to make it immediately. I thought that they could have a Sunday family. Okay. Like we used to. I'm willing to watch it play out. Yeah, Petty. I did say last episode that Fisk is either, Fisk is either going to admire her initiative or he's going to want to take revenge. And with Fisk, you never know that revenge could be beating you bloody in an alley or it could be a long, slow, I want to take everything away from you kind. I'm still not ruling out the latter. I'm not angry with you, Maya. I don't believe you. You got shot in the face. Despite. Oh, I don't want to see it. But you thought you had to. Just like I taught you. And I was impressed. I heard mechanics. So he's got a mechanical eye now? I think there's a part of you that's happy that I'm still alive. No, not at all. Relief. But also, a murder rap's not fun, so. I don't blame her. I wouldn't drink anything he brought either. Cookies from the vein. Are they still your favorite? No, I hate them now because I hate you. Let's hope those don't go the way of the wine. No guarantees. I literally wouldn't trust anything he made. Are brought. Hmm. See how long we let this play out. Because if I were my, I'd be really scared right now. Because if a literal bullet to the eye wasn't enough to take this man out, you probably need an Avenger. You want an empire. You'll have it. Is that what she wants? You can have everything. All you have to do is come home with me. Yeah, nothing comes without strings where you're concerned. So what's the string outside of the fact you're going to beat me senseless? Until then, I'm at the Choctaw Casino. That seems beneath you. I'll be waiting for you. Not that there's anything wrong with the casino. It's just Fisk at his level. He usually stays at some five-star type joints. Think about it. Okay. Always got to give credit to Vincent D'Onofrio. He does a very good job of making Kingpin so ominous and like just making the whole mood very heavy. And considering the fact that he doesn't actually do very much physically, it that's really a great sign. After your father died, I tried to get out. Mm -hmm. Fisk threatened to kill me if I did. Don't want you. <sighs> yeah, well, he's not perfect. And would you really have taken his help? You were kind of angry. I was confused. And scared, as he would be. Just like your dad was. You think your dad didn't try to leave Maya? He didn't want you in that life. But Fisk would have most likely threatened you first, and he saw what happened to his wife. As I said, though, I really don't know what else she can do because um, a bullet wasn't enough. So what? what is? Is the Hulk free? Oh, not her getting visions too. Okay, this is Tuck... What's her name? Taloa? Okay, I wonder if she's been sharing the visions the entire time. Oh, you finally came back. Okay, it's the first time one of her visions actually knocked her out. Well, see, that's the reason we're here, because you should know that. Hi, Nana! Chola can help you. <coughs> oh, no. mm, she's not asking. Oh, spicy. Hi, Nana! Got any cookies in there? Can we start with hello? It's literally two syllables. Come on. All right. The disapproving look. Oh, cookies! See? Grandmas and cookies. It always happens. They said pop. That's what we say in Canada. None of this soda nonsense. Well, let's see. She's like, it doesn't to me. Explain. Your mother, we were both in danger. 
It's in God's hands, they say. And your ancestors saved the baby. Brought me to a midwife. Where I could be surrounded by my sisters. <gasps> I mean, that is a very bold decision. Midwives are extremely helpful. And there's a lot that Western medicine does not understand. But it is very scary and risky. Childbirth often is. Honestly, people, if you haven't lately, go thank your mama because life risk in business to bring us into this world. The Lord came into this world and set about lifting the pain of others. She had a gift. Oh, that was your mom. I didn't, I don't think I heard her mom's name before. Understandably. I <sighs> Dad might have been a little bit, he was a little excessive. Maybe not destroyed, but he, she did push you away. Yes, you were. Mm, valid, valid. Take that, Grandma. That's true. She did. She was grieving. No, it's rough. I mean, Maya deserved to say that and grandma deserved to hear it. Okay, well, at least she knows the visions are real. That's the first step, but hopefully they can get past it now. Those needed, those words needed to be said. The communication had to happen. So if grandma can own up to it and take a little of that anger for a while, Maya will be back. Cause she wouldn't be that upset if she didn't want her grandma. So what is this outfit? Were you making this and you just never finished it? What's going on? Everything the light touches is yours. Okay, Lion King. And they're from Lion King? It sure is. Disney keeping it in the family, I see you. Don't get lost. I mean, it's a circle. What you making there, Grams? Armor? Because we like armor. Looks like it. Okay. Maybe she was gonna make it for her daughter and then just never finished and now she's gonna make it for her granddaughter. Oh no, she's at the Choctaw Casino. I suspect you've come to kill me again. Nah. I can't remember a time when I haven't loved you, my daughter. We only had... <sighs> you knew what you were part of at every turn. That's true. All the people you killed for me. Mm hmm You liked it. Did you plead for their lives? Facts. I was there for you! There we go. There's that Fisk temper. The same as my father failed me. Not quite the same. Your dad was an abusive maniac. Oh, wait. It's something that I want to pass on to you. Hmm. Again, I knew it had something to do with his father. That's a murder weapon. Don't touch it. Literally. I killed him to be free. That is the one I'll to give you to say with self-defense, but the rest? Here. Free yourself. Go ahead. Bro, first of all, free that's me. messy. Second of all, if a bullet didn't do it, this hammer ain't gonna do it neither. You and I, Maya, we've come full circle. Have we? In the morning. Home. Come home. Home. Oh, okay. And the thing is, Fisk is so narcissistic that he really thinks the reason she didn't use that hammer is because she loves him. Not because maybe she doesn't want to be a twisted psychopath. In his own twisted way, I think he does. What you gonna do, Maya? Bad girl, bad girl, what you gonna do? Leaving Oklahoma? Leaving Tamaha. Okay, where's she headed? And what will happen if she doesn't show up for that plane ride? Didn't go according to plan? Okay, I'm about to mush up the plane now. Is there a laser in that eye now? 
Didn't I just say don't mash up the plane? Oh, you are so predictable, Fisk. All right, guys. Well, that was an interesting episode. We see now why Fisk showed up and what it was all about. And it turns out that one of my two scenarios turned out to be true, that Fisk kind of respected what Maya did, sees the potential in her and doesn't necessarily want to see her go, especially if he can bring her back under control. And he came there to basically talk it out with her. And we see that he got this very amazing tech that lends like I said in the episode, I don't know if something like that actually exists or if it's in development, but I think that would be amazing. And again, not to take away from the importance of learning how to sign, but there are a lot of people out there where maybe that is not like, again, something that they have time to learn. Or again, if it's not a family member, this could be something that'd be very useful in schools, very useful in work situations, because for people who are deaf or hard, hard of hearing, they sometimes have to work in environments where they're around people who are hearing. And, you know, most people at a workplace are not going to go and learn um, sign language just for one or two employees. And I say just for in the sense of the amount of effort that's there for a lot of people, they may not see the value in doing that. So having something like that could really be life changing and game changing for people who are in the deaf or hard of hearing communities to be able to expand where, where they're able to work and just also their feeling of inclusivity in certain environments, I would think. So anyway, I just thought that was really cool. I don't, like I said, I don't know if it exists or if it's in development, but if it exists, I do hope they make it something that's very accessible because typically these kinds of inventions, the only other problem that happens is that they tend to be very, very expensive, which makes them harder for the average person to get. But anyway, coming back, we see that that's why Fisk came. You wanted to talk to Maya. He didn't really talk. I noticed he never, we never had the conversation about what happened with her dad or why he put the order out on, on her dad because that was really what caused this whole thing, right? Was that she believes that Fisk had her dad taken out and that's her dad, you know, that's the man that she loved more than Fisk. And we didn't hear him address that at all. Not one time did he talk about why that happened, his reasoning behind it. I mean, there really is no good reason, but you'd think that's where he would start with, but he didn't. He basically was just like, yeah, yeah. So the fact that I didn't just have you taken out for trying to take a shot at me, that should be enough for you to be happy and hear my pathetic excuses and, you know, basically have you come running back to me. Because that's really what Fisk was thinking. But of course he played the part, you know, oh, let me bring our Sunday dinners like we used to have. Yeah, let's sit there and talk. Oh, I got your favorite cookies. Like it's all very placating. It's all very surface. And I'm really glad that Maya sees now that like there was never any real depth in the sense of Fisk's desire to genuinely make Maya happy, if that makes sense. Because I want to say that I do believe that Fisk loves Maya, right? It's not that Fisk is incapable of love. Watching, the, you know, this particular version of Fisk in Daredevil, it was very clear that he is able to love and that there are people that he loves and that he has his own sense of wanting to protect and care for the people that he loves. But in the end, Fisk is a narcissist and he's not sane either. He's very, very, very disturbed. And he is someone where his love for you really only extends as long as you do what he wants you to do and fall into the box that he wants you to, right? Maya, he loved Maya when Maya did what he wanted her to. When she was his good little soldier, did what he asked, didn't ask a lot of questions, listened to him, looked at him like a god. That's when he loved Maya. That's when he wanted to protect Maya. Of course she did that when she was a kid. Who else did she really have to look up to, right? Her dad was around, but we see that because of the nature of the work that her dad did, Fisk was very much like the, the rich uncle, right? Who showed up and would do things from time to time to make her feel good or make, you know, give her nice things. So of course, as a kid, she would have looked up to Fisk. And then of course, him sliding in after her dad died. That was a perfect time when Maya was extra vulnerable and angry. And he was there providing her with an outlet for that anger and for that hurt. And also, I mean, she clearly had a nice life on top of that as, you know, getting anything she wanted financially. So of course, she's kind of put Fisk on this pedestal. And that's exactly where he wants to be where she's concerned. And that's why he was happy to love her and care for her. And again, it's not to say, like I said, I do think there was a level of paternal affection he did feel for her. But with Fisk, it's always based on him being able to control you. You need to be in a way that he can control. And a lot of that could probably be rooted back to his childhood and the fact that he grew up in an abusive household where he often felt like he had no control over himself or his safety. But either way, that's the way he operates. 
And so him coming there, doing these whole, as I said, platitudes, just very shallow attempts to try to win Maya back over. Really, in his mindset, Maya just should have been happy about the fact that he didn't want her taken out immediately because of what she did. But Maya, understandably, is like, no, like the mask has fallen off, bro. Like, I see you for what you are. And I did like that in that conversation he had with, she had with Fisk, he brought up the fact that like, you were never blind to what I did. You were never blind to the kind of man I was. And of course that flashback we saw when she was getting the ice cream and he beat the ice cream man within an inch of his life. Like since Maya was little, she know, she's known that that man is very violent and not afraid to take lives. So everything that she did, it's true. Fisk did give her a choice and she did choose it. However, it's also fair to say that Maya never really called herself a saint, if that makes sense. You know, she's never acted like what she was doing was righteous. She never acted self-righteous. However, I do understand her wanting to put a differentiation between her and Fisk. It's true that the lives she took and the fact that she did it on orders from Fisk would be considered monstrous, monstrous by some. And I would agree to a degree that it is, but... I think the big difference here is that Maya did these things, A, as a very young person, B, under the influence of someone that she considered to be a father figure, and C, when she was in the middle of grieving. So she wasn't necessarily in the right mind when she made these decisions. They were still conscious decisions. I want to make sure I'm clear about that. But you understand what I'm saying, where those factors definitely impacted the decision-making skills that she had. Whereas Fisk, his molding her, his manipulation of her, his grooming of her to be in this kind of world that was absolutely calculated. And he was a full grown adult when he started doing with this with Maya as a younger girl, right? So I think it's just really important to understand that that's the difference. And that's really what Maya was trying to bring out was that Fisk, like, yeah, maybe we've both done bad things, but the difference was that I was a child growing up, not understanding the world. And you took that and you twisted the reality that I was in to make me believe a certain thing. And absolutely what she said about how he isolated her by saying there was no one that could be trusted except for him. So she couldn't rely, she couldn't reach out to family, she couldn't reach out to friends, people who could tell her that she was going the wrong way or that Fisk was maybe not what he seemed, right? So anyway, very good conversation, very interesting conversation. And as I said, Fisk is always a very interesting character to me and he was in Daredevil as well in that he's not a black and white villain. As I said, I believe that he absolutely does love Maya in his own way, but it's not the kind of love Maya needs and it's not a healthy kind of love. He would let her live the way that she wanted. He would let her be who she wanted to be. But the fact that he's putting the stipulation on her coming back home and coming back into the fold, that lets you know that it's not real love, it's conditional. So anyway, I'm glad that Maya saw through that. And it was a very interesting montage at the end of her thinking about all the people that she cares about, all the people that she's loved, and even some of the moments she's had with Fisk, which were very loving and, you know, moments that are still very special to her and really having to decide what she wants, you know, it's in light of that. Like she knows going back with Fisk is a point of no return. And we know that especially because of the conversation she had with her uncle, her uncle explaining that he tried to leave Fisk's organization after the death of her father. And I mean, of course, he's probably seen a lot more than that. And the fact that he couldn't and that's why he's living this life because it's the only thing keeping him alive and the people that he cares about. And then he doesn't want that for Maya, that she's got the chance to actually live differently and make a different choice. And so we saw that Maya has made a decision, what that means. I mean, she chose not to go back with Fisk, but what is she going to do? Where is she going to go? There's only one episode left. So I, I don't know if she's planning on trying to finish it with Fisk. As I said before, if a bullet at close range didn't do it, I don't know what, I don't know if anything earthly can. We might need Thor for this. We might need, <laughs> we need somebody. That was kind of interesting with that whole Maya and Fisk thing. We'll have to wait till the next episode to see how she handles this decision. And then back to her having this vision, this vision that was the strongest one that she's had yet. We see that it was basically like a waking dream. She was literally paralyzed from it. We see her grandmother had the exact same vision at the same time. And like I said, I'm wondering if they've been having these visions in parallel the whole time and they've just been only focusing on Maya. But anyway, Maya finally goes to see her grandmother at her uncle's behest and they have a long overdue conversation about what happened and why they are where they are right now where they can barely have a conversation. And Maya said the things that needed to be said, called her grandmother out on the fact that she really shouldn't have pushed her away and blamed her indirectly for the things that happened. 
And again, she didn't really blame Maya, but that was the way she treated Maya, right? Pushing her away in a way was kind of blaming Maya for what happened. It was a very human response. And like I said in the episode, Maya was right to say to her grandmother, like, I needed you. I was a child. I lost somebody too. And I really needed my grandmother. I needed that maternal, you know, energy in that time. And you pushed me away. You chose yourself. And it's true. What her grandmother did was wrong and it was hurtful. And Maya has every right to be angry. At the same time, however, people don't always hand, there's not a handbook on grief, right? Like there really isn't a a proper way to grieve. People do it differently. And some people, unfortunately, are very, closed off during that time. They push people away. They get very angry. They get very just hard to deal with and hard to live with because they're still trying to process their emotions. And I think, you know, the grandmother's the grandmother's description there about how Maya reminded her so much of her baby, like this daughter who we discovered she had a literal life or death experience with in giving birth to her. And I mean, I've met a lot of women who've had very traumatic births with their children. And when I tell you that they tend to have a very soft spot for that child because it very much is like just, it's, it's a it's a traumatic bond, right? They, they form a trauma bond right there at birth when something like that happens. And so for her mother, sorry, her grandmother to have gone through that with her mom and had that special relationship and that special appreciation for her miracle baby in a way, And then to have her ripped away like that, especially in a way that didn't need to happen, that would just be absolutely earth shattering. And we saw like her mom said, like her grandmother said, like her heart shattered and she just was angry. And unfortunately that anger just got sprayed at anybody in close range. And unfortunately, typically when we're hurt, we tend to hurt the people closest to us first. So all of that to say that I understand where her grandmother was also coming from. It wasn't right, but it's understandable and I can empathize with The fact that she just dealt with it in the way that she knew how at the time, wrong or right. Now that those things have been said, they have the space to actually build that bridge back to each other anew. I mean, will they ever be as close as they could have been? Probably not, but there's still a chance to recuperate what's left. That was a good conversation. And then we see that after that conversation, Chula went and um, unveiled what looks like armor of some kind. And she started chipping away at what looks like to me either a knee pad or a shoulder pad. I'm not sure. But my point is it looks like it might be some form of an outfit. And we all know in Marvel, an outfit's very important. And unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with Echo in the comics. So I'm not sure if that was that little shot that we saw of the bodice of the outfit is a direct correlation to her costume in the comics. But I'm going to assume that there's something there or at least a correlation there. And that in the next episode, we're going to see Maya possibly don a actual costume or an actual outfit for herself because yeah, she's she's in the verse now and we just can't be part of it unless we actually have the uniform. So yeah, it was a good episode, a little bit more emotional, not a lot of action here, but at least we got a little bit more of the emotional layers between Maya and Kingpin and then Maya and her grandmother. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.